All right, I want to talk about Hillary Clinton today because she finally spoke the truth about something, believe it or not. But before we get to that, so I, I want to start with some good news because I feel like so often we start this show with really heavy stuff. We're talking about critical race theory. We're talking about transing kids. And we have some good news for a change. It The, the International Swimming Governing Body, which is... Uh, as it sounds, it's the it's the it's the organization that governs the rules of swimming competitions all around the world. They announced um, guidelines on transgender swimmers in women's competition, and they essentially are banning biological males from competing in women's sports. Almost, they're they're this close to doing it. The president of FINA, which is the international. Um, Swimmer and Governing Board. His name is Hussein Al Musalam. This is his statement. He said, We have to protect the rights of our athletes to compete, but we also have to protect competitive fairness at our events, especially the women's category at FINA competitions. So the, the new rule that they announced will prohibit any biological male who uh, identifies as transgender or identifies as a quote unquote woman if that, if that male trans after the age of 12. This is what it specifically says. Um, if male puberty was suppressed beginning at Tanner stage two, which is a puberty developmental um, standard or uh, um, uh, benchmark, or before age 12, whichever is later, and they have since continuously maintained their testosterone levels in serum or plasma below 2.5 um, in, in this, is, this is quite something. This is great news. This is for the first time in this trans discussion when it comes to not the government, but any person of authority where they've said, wait a second, there's something wrong here. Recognizing that there is a difference physiologically between someone who was born male and someone who was born female is not bigoted to say. It, it actually, we, we, have to, we have to recognize reality if we want to protect women, especially in sports, obviously. And this new rule that the International Swimming, Swimming Governing Board voted on, um, the, the board members voted in favor of this. Get this, 71.5% of this governing board voted in favor of these new policies. What does that tell us? That tells us that even though the wokesters are maybe the loudest voices sometimes, that the NCAA and certainly the University of Pennsylvania, where Leah Thomas is a swimmer, that, that the people who are in positions of authority speak loudly and make it seem like everybody is in favor of letting biological males who identify as women compete in women's sport. It's not true. It's not true. Athletes and those governing athletes, the large majority of them recognize the difference between males and females. And by the way, would this new rule prohibit Leah Thomas from competing in the women's competition? Yes, it would. It would indeed, because Leah Thomas did not trans until um, 18 years old, 19, 20 years old, until halfway through college. So this would prohibit Leah Thomas, who, by the way, recently stated that um, he wants to compete in the Olympics in the women's competition. So yikes. How unfair would that be? So what the International Governing Board of Swimming is going to do is they're going to create a third category, male, female, and then they're going to create an open category of competition for trans swimmers. I personally think that's stupid. I, I don't think that trans swimmers are being denied an opportunity to compete. It's not like Leah Thomas, because, because at born Will Thomas transition now identify as, as Leah Thomas. It's not like Thomas is being denied an opportunity to compete. Um, Thomas can compete in the male category. No, no one's no one's stopping trans swimmers from from competing. So the idea that is somehow discriminatory or that it deprives them opportunity is simply not true. It just doesn't let males compete in the female category. So I think it's I think that the International Swimming Swimming Governing Board didn't need to create an open category. I do politically understand why they did it because it it it's a courageous move to actually say nope, transgender swimmers can't compete in the women's category. So they're trying to say, hey, we will also create opportunities because we don't want to be, we don't want to um, appear non-inclusive to trans. But what this will actually prove, and it's interesting from a cultural standpoint, is that the transgender lobby or the radical left who are trans activists aren't actually looking for a solution that pleases everyone. They're not actually looking for what I would call secret option number three. Just like in the transgender bathroom um, debates, they weren't looking for, oh, you know, maybe a, a single stall, a single, a single bathroom that isn't, that isn't gender specific, but only allows one person in it. It'll protect everybody's privacy. A lot of schools were willing to do that, but the transgender lobby says, no, no, 
transgender biological males who identify as female, they want to be in group bathrooms with other women. The trans activist lobby is not interested in common sense solutions here. Um, so you'll, you'll, it'll be interesting from a cultural standpoint to see all the trans activists say, no, no, an open category is not good enough. These, these biological males who identify as women are real women. They should be able to compete against women. Keep an eye out for that. The other interesting thing is there's a lot of pushback from, you know, these, these trans lobbyists, these trans activists against this new rule in international swimming competitions. But you will notice that in this pushback, there is never any mention of science or biology. Um, Athlete Ally tweeted this, FINA's new eligibility criteria for trans athletes and athletes with intersex variations is discriminatory, harmful, unscientific, and not in line with the 2021 IOC, that's the International Olympic Committee, principles. If we truly want to protect women's sports, we must include all women. Okay, so they say unscientific, but they don't they don't mention any science. They don't mention any biology here. The same with a human rights campaign. Their interim president, Joni Madison, said, this sudden and discriminatory decision is a blatant attack on transgender athletes who have worked to comply with longstanding policies that al- have allowed them to participate for years without issue. This policy is an example of swimming organizations caving to the avalanche of ill-informed, prejudiced attacks targeted at one particular transgender swimmer. We urge the FINA to rethink its policy and ensure inclusion of all athletes, including transgender women, and allow them to participate in sports free from discrimination, abuse, and harassment. So this is the other thing that these activists like to do. They like to accuse us or, you know, the International Swimming Governing Board of abuse and harassment and discrimination, and they are facing no such thing. The actual science, the actual science here, which they make no mention of, oddly enough, has been reported on by the New York Times. You may not have thought that the New York Times would be the one to publish this, but this is what the New York Times says. Peer-reviewed studies show that even after testosterone suppression, top-level transgender women, now remember that phrase means biological men who identify as women, retain a substantial edge when racing against top biological women, according to Michael J. Joyner, a doctor at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, who studies the physiology of male and female athletes. Now, the left always tells us to defer to the experts. Who's an expert if not this person? A, A doctor who studies the physiology of male and female athletes. Men on average, the New York Times says, have broader shoulders, bigger hands, longer torsos, great long, greater lung and heart capacity, and their muscles are denser. These social aspects to sport, these are, there are social aspects to sport, but physiology and biology underpin it, Dr. Joyner said in an interview with the New York Times this year, end quote. The New York Times, ladies and gentlemen, this was the actual science as reported by the New York Times. You might think that those two words at this point are contradictory, but there you have it. You see the quote, you see it on your screen here. Um, None of those people, the trans lobbyists or the radical leftists who push this agenda are mentioning the actual science. They just hurl these false allegations of abuse and discrimination and harassment. So let me just say this. The swimming governing body, FINA, is exactly right. Kudos to them. I love to see this. This is great news. This is encouraging news. They're exactly right to prohibit biological males from competing in women's swimming competitions. It's obviously unfair. And I mean, it's it's absurd in the sense that we need any kind of study to show us that biological males have a um, advantage, a a physiological advantage over women. Duh. Of course they do. Um, The only problem that I have with what FINA did is their rule doesn't go far enough, really. Even males who are trans as children under the age of 12 should not be allowed to compete in in women's sports. So FINA is almost there, this close, this close. But I want to give them kudos and celebrate this good news. But now you might be thinking, okay, so what on earth does this have to do with Hillary Clinton? Let's dig into that. I'm Liz Wheeler. Welcome to The Liz Wheeler Show. Now, I like Moinkbox because they are helping keep the U.S. independent from China. 60% of U.S. pork production comes from one company. It's owned by the Chinese. And their hogs are given something called ractopamine, which is banned in 160 countries, including in China, yet you find it in your grocery store aisle every day. Moink delivers grass-fed and grass-finished beef and lamb, pastured pork and chicken, and sustainable wild-caught Alaskan salmon straight to your door. Moink Farmers Farm 
kind of like our grandparents did. And as a result, moink meat tastes like it should because the family farm does it better. You choose the meat delivered in every box that you receive, like ribeyes, chicken breasts, pork chops, salmon fillets, and much more. Plus, if you don't like it, you can cancel anytime. I love Moink because they're committed to our country. I know that you will like it too. And my husband can attest to the fact that Moink meat tastes good. So keep American farming going by signing up at moinkbox.com slash Liz right now. And if you use my URL, moinkbox.com slash Liz, then you will get free filet mignon in every order for a year. That is one year of the best filet mignon that you will ever taste, but it is for limited time. It's spelled M-O-I-N-K box.com slash Liz. That's moinkbox.com slash Liz. You'll be glad you did it. Okay, before we get to the Hillary Clinton stuff, did you guys see the video of Joe Biden falling off his bicycle? When I first saw the headline about Biden falling off his bicycle this week, I thought, oh, okay, that's a bombastic headline. I bet it's I bet it's not quite as bad as they as the headlines portray, because what could be better clickbait, right? Than than saying that Biden fell off his bike. Every single one of us is gonna click on that and watch that video. So I did, of course. I clicked on it. I actually saw it on Twitter first. And I thought, oh, okay, well, let's let's watch and see what happens here. Let's 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 take a look at this together. <laughs> Oh dear Lord, oh dear Lord. So what's actually what's actually worse than just falling off a bicycle, because it is true, a lot of leftists are saying, you know, oh, we thought Trump had a stroke when he, he held that water glass with two hands, but you see Biden actually fall off a bike and they're like, oh, happens to every biker. That is true. Bikers who are serious road bikers do fall off their bikes, but how many of them fall off when they're actually standing stationary? Matt, can we play that video again? Because watch what actually happens here. He doesn't fall off the bike while he's riding his bike. He is first riding his bike and then he stops or he slows down to stop to take a photo. And it's then at that point where he's he's standing up that he he wipes out, that he crashes. <laughs> and I thought, oh my gosh, these these headlines, these tweets are not actually being hyperbolic. This isn't exactly true. And what a metaphor this is for our economy because we were, we were uh you know, pedal to the metal, if you will, under under President Trump. And then as soon as Biden took the wheel, what did he do? He not only ground it to a halt, then smack, we all fell right on our faces. Um, also, the picture of him, the stills, um, the photographs that were taken of him when he was on the ground, this is the most ungraceful, the most horrendous photo. In fact, when I saw this photo of Biden on the ground, um, I thought, you know, those commercials on TV, those um, I've fallen and I can't get up commercial. Biden looks like an advertisement for one of those fallen and I can't get up buttons. This is the most humiliating photo of the president of the free world. Um, The memes, of course, abounded on this. But imagine, imagine like one of our adversaries, like Vladimir Putin, seeing this. Absolutely an embarrassment. You could, you could not, um, compose a scenario where the president of the United States looks like he has less power and less influence. Absolute loss of respect here. Um, And yeah, really a commentary on how Biden has handled our country, which is an embarrassment for him. And that brings us to Hillary Clinton here. So Hillary Clinton did an interview with the Financial Times. And uh, how do I describe this interview? It's the most fawning interview that you've heard in a long time. Obviously, this author is very pro-Hillary Clinton. Um, it's, it, it, it's quite cloying, if you will, to read it. I do, I do recommend you read it. I'll post it on my locals because it's kind of funny how, how he, he just sucks up the whole time. He talks about how he wants to take down the politician mask of Hillary Clinton, and yet he obviously doesn't. There's nothing, there's nothing revealed in this interview except something unintentionally. So let's read through this together. First of all, um, when his name is Edward Luce, by the way, the author or the reporter, the journalist, whatever he wants to call himself, who wrote this piece. He writes, Clinton has described herself as the most investigated innocent person in America. And I thought, isn't that exactly what a crook would say? (laughs) The most investigated innocent person in America. This, This woman has lived a political life and gotten away with more than maybe anybody since Ted Kennedy. I cannot think of a politician who has done more wrong, committed more egregious law-breaking activities, engaged in blatant corruption, and just gotten away with it than Hillary Clinton. And yet she has the audacity to describe herself as the most investigated innocent person in America. She is actually the Wicked Witch of the West. She, that literally the Wicked Witch of the West. And 
This is what she said about, she was asked by, about Roe v. Wade. This is what she said about Margaret Atwood. Now, Margaret Atwood is the author of The Handmaid's Tale. And you know how the left is sending all those radical leftist abortion groupies into Catholic churches dressed like The Handmaid's Tale? This dystopian novel. It was written by Margaret Atwood that um, poses this idea, or, or the premise, I should say, of the book is that, um, well, she portrays it as Republicans, Christians, if you will, have forced women, subjugated women, and forced them just to bear children um, essentially sex slaves. This is what, this is what, um, Hillary Clinton said about it. She was asked by the, uh, by Edward Luce. She said, he said, he said, what is the Christian rights end game? I asked, presumably they would not be able to create the theological dystopia depicted in Margaret Atwood's 1985 novel, The Handmaid's Tale. My question, he says, triggers a passionate response from Hillary Clinton. Quote, the level of insidious rulemaking to further oppress women Almost knows no end, Clinton says. You look at this, and how could you not but think that Margaret Atwood was a prophet? She's not just a brilliant writer. She was a prophet. Oh, oh, I cringe even hearing her words in, in written form. This woman is so disgusting. This is why Repub not just Republicans, but the left rejected her in 2016, too. She was asked whether she would run again in 2024. And this is what she said. No, Hillary said, out of the question. First of all, I expect Biden to run. He certainly intends to run. It would be very disruptive to challenge that. And then she gives no second of all. She just gives a first of all. She does, however, say that in this, in this interview that she thinks Trump will want to run again. She says, quote, I think if he can, he's going to run again. Follow the money with Trump. He's raised about 130 million sitting in his bank account that he used to travel around to fund organizing against elections. I don't know who will challenge him in the Republican primary. Interesting. Very interesting. Um, she calls losing in 2016 a traumatic event. But he, here's what's very interesting. So she, she was asked about 2016 and her loss to Trump. And she says not only was it traumatizing, she actually blames voter fraud. We're told, we're told by the left that if we question the integrity of the 2020 election, if we so much as even whisper an insinuation about voter fraud, that we're inciting an election, that we're taking, we're, we're propagating the so-called big lie. And yet Hillary Clinton blames voter fraud for why she lost in 2016. And they don't say a word about it. It's bananas, the double standard here. Um, this is what she says. Or the, I, I guess Edward asks her. He says, I ask whether things would have turned out differently had Clinton, not Trump, won in 2016. Her answer makes it clear that she thinks the January 6th, 2021 storming of Capitol Hill to stop Joe Biden's certification would simply have happened four years earlier. This is what she says. Literally within hours of the polls closing in 2016, we had so much evidence pouring in about voters being turned away in Milwaukee and not being able to vote in Detroit, she replies. These states were run by Republicans, so there was no way to find out the truth about any of them. I read this and I was like, are you kidding? This is actually the flip side. If you just, if you just replace Trump saying Democrats and leftists in blue states with Hillary saying Republicans in red states, it's the same thing. Allegations of voter fraud. And Hillary has absolutely no evidence for this. And yet it's okay with the left. It's okay with the mainstream media. Adam Schiff, oh my goodness, he certainly doesn't care about this. He certainly would never accuse Hillary Clinton of inciting an insurrection here. Hillary Clinton also blames Russia. Of course she does. She blames Vladimir Putin. Now, I like Bambi, and I think you will too, because small business owners, have you ever had an issue with employee attendance? Have you ever had an employee altercation in the workplace, maybe? Have you ever been confused on how to handle a situation with an employee? Or have you ever had employee performance issues? Well, the bad news here is that one complaint against your company can turn your world upside down. The good news is Bambi is here to help small business owners implement good HR practices. Bambi is an HR platform built for businesses just like yours. So you can automate the most important HR practices and get your own dedicated HR manager. First, Bambi's HR autopilot automates your core policies. I'm talking workplace training and employee feedback. Then your dedicated HR manager will help you navigate the more complex parts of HR and guide you to compliance. Now, these dedicated HR managers are available by phone, by email, or by real-time chat if you need them. An in-house HR manager like this can cost up to $80,000 a year. But with Bambi, your dedicated HR manager starts at just $99 a month. No hidden fees. You can cancel anytime you run your business. Let Bambi run your HR. Go to Bambi.com slash Liz right now for your free HR audit. You have to use my URL. It's spelled B-A-M 
B-E-E.com slash Liz. Bambi.com slash Liz. Okay, so of course, Hillary Clinton also blames Russia. So voter fraud and Russia are who we're supposed to believe um, impacted the outcome of the 2016 election. But again, Hillary's allowed to, to delegitimize an election. But if a Republican whispers about round the clock drop boxes or universal mail-in voting or, or vote harvesting, ballot harvesting, or you know sig- degradation of signature verification, my goodness, we have to be silenced on big tech, not Hillary Clinton. Um, Luce writes, it seems like a good moment to ask Clinton about Russia's leader whom she once quipped had no soul. Though Clinton talks about today's situation in Ukraine, she keeps referring back to Putin's role in the 2016 election, which she believes was in revenge for a statement she had made as Secretary of State in 2012 in support of the pro-democracy protests against his return to Russia's presidency. Oh, so she brings everything back to why she thinks it wasn't her fault for not campaigning properly and for being a terrible person that turned off her voters. This is what... This is, this is the, the one element of truth. And this is actually what got me. This is why we're talking about this interview. This is why it's a worthwhile interview, even though it's kind of fawning, kind of disgusting, not that informative. This comment, Luce writes, I cannot allow the lunch, she's interviewing over lunch, to end without questioning the direction of her party. I say the Democrats seem to be going out of their way to lose elections by elevating activist causes, notably the transgender debate, which are relevant only to a small minority. What sense does it make to depict J.K. Rowling as a fascist? To my surprise, he writes, Clinton shares the premise of my question. Quote, we're standing on the precipice of losing our democracy and everything that everybody else cares about then goes out the window, she says. Look, the most important thing is to win the next election. The alternative is so frightening that whatever does not help you win should not be a priority. My goodness. My goodness, she actually agrees with the premise that the transgender debate that the Democrats are so obsessed with right now, this this cause, this this transing of Americans' children, um, she doesn't think that they should be prioritizing this. This is actually, accidentally or not, whether her reasons are the correct reasons or whether they're for a different motive here, she's actually correct. I mean, this this is this is the go woke go broke premise. We we saw this just this past week when the uh, when the Toy Story movie came out, Lightyear, that Tim Allen, because he's conservative, was fired from. He was replaced with this radical leftist, Chris Evans. And it includes a lesbian kiss that was originally not going to be aired. But then when Disney got into, into beef with DeSantis in Florida about their queer agenda that they were they admitted they were inserting into children's programming, Disney decided to put this lesbian kiss back in. This is obviously a turnoff to a lot of consumers, maybe half the country, maybe more, who are who were at least consumers of, of, of Disney programming. And this, this idea that if you go woke, you go broke. If you're not selling things that your consumers want, if you're selling your ideology, you're forcing your ideology on people, that it's not good for business. And that's accurate in this case. In the first three days, of light year opening at the box office, it grossed $51 million. It was 20 million on Friday, 16 million on Saturday, and 14 million on Sunday. And what's really interesting here is there was a headline from Deadline that said, excuse my French here, but what the hell happened here? And they make, in, in this article where they're exploring why exactly this, this Toy Story movie bombed at the box office, they, they make the suggestion that, well, maybe it was just too soon, Toy Story 4, came out three years ago. It had an enormous, enormous first weekend. We're talking $121 million in the first weekend. And Deadline suggested that, well, maybe three years is too soon. This, obviously, common sense makes no sense because these 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 movies that build on each other, oftentimes they have a new movie that comes out every year and they do just fine. So this is, this is a bizarre idea. The truth of the matter is, and what they didn't mention and don't want to mention, is that a lot of people were turned off by the idea of a lesbian kiss in a children's movie, by queer agenda being inserted into this Toy Story movie, and then also by the fact that Chris Evans, this new star that replaced everyone's favorite, Tim Allen, Chris Evans said that anyone who um, was not comfortable with the lesbian kiss, this is what he said, the real truth is those people, people uncomfortable with that, are idiots. He then called them dinosaurs who will eventually die off. Imagine imagine being in a position like Chris Evans where it's your job to sell your movie to, um, to the American people. And instead of saying, hey, here's a movie I made. It's really cool. It's really artistic. It's a fun story. It's great for children. Come and see it. Come and, come and give us our, your money so that you can be entertained. He looks at you and says, come and buy my movie, you idiot 
bigoted dinosaur. Like, okay, who is that gonna who is that gonna work with? That is not a sales tactic that one would think would actually work. He goes on to say, this is what Evan says. It's tough to not be a little frustrated that it even has to be a topic of discussion. He says that it is this kind of news. The goal is that we can get to a point where it's the norm and that this doesn't have to be some uncharted waters, that eventually this is just the way it is. So he admits that the reason that they put it in there is because they want it to be universally accepted. And if you don't, remember, you're a dinosaur, you're a bigot, you will die off, you're you're an idiot, uh, but, but please give Chris Evans and Disney your money. Um, Hillary Clinton might have accidentally found this little truth, go woke, go broke. This is not a topic, a political topic or cultural topic that it's going to win that's going to win voters. What actually matters to voters is inflation. What matters to voters is the fact that the U.S. economy has not grown this quarter. We might be in a recession. We'll know if we're in a recession in ju- in just a month or so. Um, if there is negative growth, if there is, you know, if it contracts one more month, if it, it or one more quarter, I should say, two quarters of um, a loss of growth means that there is a recession. And this is what voters care about inflation and the possibility or the threat of a recession. And yet the left, when they address this, ignore the reality of what we the people are facing here. And Janet Yellen is a perfect example of this. She says the recession is not inevitable, but not for the reasons that, not for the reasons that you might think, not because, well, Biden could do something about this and change this, Um, It's not inevitable and you will be fine, she says, completely ignoring the reality for most of us. Madam Secretary, thanks for joining us this morning. You know, the Wall Street Journal reported this morning that 44% of economists expect a recession in the next year. Is that what you expect as well? Well, I expect the economy to slow. Uh, It's been growing at a very rapid rate as the economy, as the labor market has recovered and we have reached full employment. It's natural now that we expect a transition to steady and stable growth. But I don't think a recession is at all all inevitable. Um, Chair Powell, uh, clearly inflation is unacceptably high. It's President Biden's top priority to bring it down. And Chair Powell has said that his goal is to bring inflation down while maintaining a strong labor market. Um, That's going to take skill and luck, but um, I believe it's possible. I don't think a recession is inevitable. It's going to take skill and luck to bring down inflation, and a recession isn't inevitable. This is President Biden's top priority. This is such a load of BS. First of all, it doesn't take skill and luck. It takes action by the president of the United States. And Biden, this isn't Biden's top priority, obviously, or he would have taken action, but there are concrete actions that Biden can take that would improve inflation and, and yes, actually avoid a recession. Maybe, maybe it's too late to avoid a recession, but he could quickly help the U.S. economy recover from a recession before it deeply hurts the American people. But he's not doing this. I mean, he's not drilling for oil. He's, he's stopped the pipelines. He, he's propagating completely unstable energy policy that discourages um, oil and gas companies from drilling on federal leases that they've already obtained here. He's com- he's continuing spending. He's still pushing Build Back Better, which would which would not only print and spend more money, would add to the federal debt and deficit here. These are all policies that he could make the active decision to reverse, and it would help inflation. It would help gas prices. It would help food prices. It would, you know, if we reduced our dependence on foreign oil, reduced our dependence on China, then we wouldn't have these supply chain crises that he that he blames as if they're just something arbitrary that happens. Um, So to say that it's Biden's top priority, it's not true. And to say that it's just a matter of luck and a little bit of skill about whether this will be inevitable or not is is absolutely absurd. Um, Obama's, former President Obama's former economic advisor actually says that we are going to face a recession. Now, I like Dormeo because really good, really nice mattresses are crazy expensive, but I still wanna sleep on a bed that feels really good and really nice. Now, if you suffer from achy hips, back, or shoulders, then you have to try the premium mattress topper by Dormeo. At a fraction of the cost of a new mattress, you can get that new bed feeling without having to buy a new bed. Their smart body zoning helps create better support for your body while you sleep. That means no more waking up with unexpected aches and pains that you didn't have the night before. Their mattress topper has a full range of sizes from twin all the way through king. They even have RV sizes and a new split head king. 
And it's perfect for everything from an adjustable base to a spare bed in the guest room to couches, futons, and boats. Basically, if you can sleep on it, they probably have a mattress topper for it. Plus, Dormeo is known for their incredible customer service. Don't believe me? Well, give them a call. Message them on their website and be amazed at how fast they respond. Let me tell you, they sent me one and I love it. I think you will too. Right now, you go if you go to dormeo.com slash Liz, my URL, you will receive 30% off your Dormeo mattress topper. That's a really good deal, guys. It's the best offer that you'll find anywhere, but you have to go to my URL, dormeo.com slash Liz. It's spelled D-O-R-M-E-O.com slash Liz. Remember, with their 10-year warranty and a 100-night risk-free trial plus free shipping, it's crazy not to give Dormeo a try. Okay, so... Janet Yellen, actually, before we even go to Obama's economic advisor, Janet Yellen goes on to blame the war in Ukraine, uh, which she says disrupted global supply chains. And in a very, very small sense, that's true. But the reason that it disrupted global supply chains is because we have too much reliance on, well, Biden has made the United States too reliant on Russian oil or Democrats. And yes, even some Republicans have made the United States too reliant on China. These are things that can be changed. These are things the president of the United States has the power to change. Biden has the power to act differently so that we aren't so impacted by the bad choices of Russia or the bad choices of China. And Janet Yellen dismisses what we're suffering at the gas pump, how much baby formula costs and how scarce it is or how much our groceries cost by just saying, well, people will be fine. They have enough savings that, you know, consumer spending won't really be impacted because people will just dip into their savings. And when I heard this, I thought, okay, do you have any idea how much the average American has in savings or how much they don't want to spend what they do have? According to Dave Ramsey, 45% of Americans, that's almost half of our country, have less than $1,000 saved for an emergency. So half the country is not situated financially for a recession where they can just dip into their savings and their consumer spending will remain the same. Janet Yellen is talking from the position of an elitist who maybe she has a ton of savings. I don't know. Maybe her friends are rich and they they don't have to think about what the everyday American is suffering. But this idea that people just have this enormous nest egg is completely at odds with the situation of at least half of our country. It's bananas to me that she would that she would rely on a statistic like this to simply dismiss dismiss inflation, dismiss the possibility of a recession. Former Obama administration economic advisor Larry Summers said that all of the factors that are happening right now in our economy point to point to the likelihood of a recession happening in the next two years. This is what he said. Um, he said, all of that tells me that while I wouldn't presume whether to judge the timing, the dominant probability would be by the end of next year, we will be seeing a recession in the American economy. He, um, he said, if you look at history, there has never been a moment when inflation was above 4%, remember it's 8.6% right now, and unemployment was below 5% when we did not have a recession within the next two years. Who would have thought that an Obama economic advisor would actually have a sensible comment to make? But maybe even Obama administration officials are sensible compared to what we're seeing in the Biden administration here. And Biden also dismisses the idea, the likelihood of a recession. He said, the American people shouldn't believe a warning. He's talking about all of these economic experts who are saying, yeah, it really looks like that we're going to be entering into a recession. The American people shouldn't believe these experts, he said. The American people should just say, let's see, let's wait and see which is correct. And Biden says, from my perspective, you talked about a recession and it's not inevitable. Mr. President, it's not inevitable if you make changes to your economic policy, but you're not. You are actively spending, actively printing money, actively keeping the United States reliant on foreign powers, actively refusing or neglecting to address our brutal supply chain crisis. And yeah, all of that adds up to it is going to be inevitable. So here's where we circle back to Hillary Clinton and her lovely interview with the Financial Times. She was right and she was wrong. She uh, she was right, accidental or not. She was right that the American people and voters specifically, voters specifically don't care about the left's push uh, the, this this transgender push. The old, really, the people that care about it are the people who oppose it. But this is not an issue that's going to bring Democratic voters to the polls. And a lot of Democrats, especially parents in, with kids in school, are turned off by this 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 forcible 
this force feeding of the transgender ideology to our kids and our families through our corporations in sports. So Hillary Clinton, I literally never thought I'd say the words, Hillary Clinton was right. She was right that if you go woke, you will go broke. We saw that with Toy Story. Um, Hillary Clinton is wrong, however, on, on if you zoom out. She was right on this little, little thing. But zooming out, she's wrong that Democrats are smart enough to back away from the transgender activism. Because what she misses, what Hillary Clinton misses, the, the underpinning of Hillary Clinton's political philosophy is corruption. She wants to make money. She, she's a radical leftist not so much ideologically like Ilhan Omar or AOC, but more because she wants power and she wants to use that power to make millions of dollars for herself and her family. And she doesn't, she hasn't fully grasped or fully embraced this idea that the radical left, in order to usher our country towards the Marxist utopia that they envision, they need the transgender ideology for all the reasons we discuss all the time. So Hillary Clinton is wrong that they're simply going to, that the Democrats are going to course correct and acknowledge that, uh, you know, this isn't appealing to the Democratic voter. We better switch to talk about to talk about the economy. Hillary Clinton is also wrong because Democrats can't just switch and talk about the economy, even if they had some level of self awareness that most voters are turned off by this this transgenderism avalanche here. Democrats can't pivot and talk about the economy for the reasons that we that we just discussed because obama and obama administration officials whether it's whether it's powell at the federal reserve whether it's yellen whether it's any of the other administration officials who are just being dismissive of inflation they're just they're just ignoring the idea of a recession they're they're negligent in doing what they could do politically to avoid this to bring down gas prices to to bolster our supply chain all of that um they can't pivot to this because it's all biden's fault what are they going to say they're going to blame Putin. Democrats going to blame the once in a century pandemic. Nobody buys that. Everybody knows when they see their gas tank, when they see that it's $100 to fill up every week, they know that the little stickers on the gas pumps across the country, which crack me up every time I see them, the little Biden guys that say, I did this. Everyone knows this is true. Even Democrat voters know that this is true. So Hillary Clinton's strategy here of, okay, we'll acknowledge that this transgender issue isn't a winning issue and pivot to what people care about, they can't. The Democrats have caught themselves between a rock and a hard place and um, they don't know which way to turn. My hope is that this leads to a tremendous loss in 2020, in the 2022 midterm elections and that Democrats never learn their lesson and they just keep losing and losing and losing. But of course, we shall see. Join me over on Locals, LizWheelerShow.com slash Locals. Elon Musk said that TikTok is destroying civilization. And then he said, actually, maybe social media in general is destroying civilization. And I think I found the TikTok video that perfectly exemplifies exactly what Elon Musk is talking about, about the destruction of our civilization. So come on over, LizWheelerShow.com slash Locals. If you use my promo code, access then you can get one month free on your annual subscription. You can watch what we're talking about. You can join us without having to pay for one month. LizWheelerShow.com slash locals, promo code access. We will see you over there. Thank you for watching today. Thank you for listening. I'm Liz Wheeler. This is The Liz Wheeler Show. The Liz Wheeler Show is produced by Jonathan Hay. Executive producer, Chad Abbott. Director of photography, Kevin McRoberts. Editor, Alejandro Figuerilla. Sound mixer, Robin Fenderson. Director of Marketing, Emily Washler. Production and Talent Coordinator, Matt Toffler. And Senior Publicist, Patricia Jackson. This has been a Soundfront production. If you haven't already, give this video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button below, and ring the bell to make sure you never miss a video.